Okay. It's very yellow. So some original features. Obviously all of this paper needs coming off. Everybody's gonna need plastering. Sounds decent, right? It's just outdated. It's gonna be a nightmare to try and get some of this off at the wall. I'm, I'm not a big fan of taking wallpaper off. But uh, yeah, the mold is a bit of a concern. I'm really surprised from the outside. It doesn't look as though it'd be as big as what it is. Good thing is it's uh, high ceilings and you can see it's uh, lats and plaster. Bit bland, so it'd be nice to actually put some some wood down or something. Not really a selling point to have a bathroom and toilet just off the kitchen. I mean, all the, all the wood is rotted. And wood's flaking off. I'm not a fan of uh, buying new builds. I like the idea when you find something old and in your red you start to think what it could have been or what it could be. So for me, this is the best thing. Because my dad always taught me, if you're going to buy a house, Find one, find one that you can do up and make it your own, so... Plus, you, that's where you make your profit, so... Obviously, that's why we're here. Dave has decided, for reasons of his own, that the upstairs ceilings need to come down and that the easiest way of removing the debris is to cut a hole in the living room ceiling. Faced with even more destruction, Shelley is, once again, questioning the wisdom of Dave's methods. You know what you're doing, and I, and I, and I trust, but I, I just, I'm like, oh, it just seems like a lot of work. Oh, it is a lot of work. That's the whole point. Because all the stuff, when we knock it down, we'll just sweep it, and it can drop into that section there. Would it I not don't... have just been quicker to fill bins up upstairs <laughs> and move them? If you fill a bin up, we're yeah. going to have to pay for bins. Is that... And then every time you're trying to drag it downstairs, what if you pop a bag? Well, get it there, put wheelbarrow there. That falls into the wheelbarrow, you turn it around, straight out, into the skip. OK. Yeah, because either way, we're, we're knocking this down. So because we're, we're going to be taping the joints and then just skimming that section, we're saving money on that side as well. So we're saving money on every avenue that we're doing. OK. Because on the survey, it even specifies to remove this. So once somebody, as a buyer, comes in, has a look at them, they've got their own survey, and they'll go, OK, on the survey, what have you done? Mm. If we can tick off everything on that survey, if not majority of it, that's in our best interest, which is obviously removing it. I'm going to get people saying, why, not, why do you not just board it? But it's like putting a Band-Aid over, over the plaster, because if the plaster behind it starts to vibrate, or if um, I'm drilling up and I'm putting electrics in, it's going to start disturbing it. And it's already warped anyway. And it's holding a lot of that, that nicotine tar smell as well. And it'll, it'll always come through. You not know, find it strange how it, it's, it almost looks worse than what it was when we turned up. You're right there, mate. You've even got me worried. That alarm's sounding for a reason. Who's sat the smoke alarm off? A sad and forlorn little red brick terrace. Decked out in 70s sepia toned glamour, it didn't even have an upstairs bathroom. Well, look at it now. Modern, bright and airy, with a chocolate box view through a trellis fence to the canal. Time to call in the estate agents. The price that I'm thinking of at the moment, with the way the market is and the lack of properties, is putting it on for offers over the 200 mark. So, in my opinion, a price of 200,000. I think we could go on slightly higher, but the aim will be to get more people through the door, which then could encourage more offers and hopefully get them a little bit extra. I, I just didn't anticipate that it would be, it'd be valued that much, so... Um, I'm very overwhelmed, <laughs> to be honest. I'm tired, but I'm overwhelmed. I'm just trying to take it all in and just hope that um, there's an offer quickly. <laughs> nice. Love the wallpaper. Dark, very dark. <laughs> I can only imagine what is living in this living room. Interesting, being a 
workyard or something. I wonder if there's any hidden treasures anywhere. Interesting. Oh, but this is just so cute. I mean, obviously, I can't keep much of it. Looking at the fireplace, I think Steph could get, do a magic on that, maybe. Oh, I can't wait to just bring that back to life. That is incredible. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, that's the hole in the floor I was looking for. I like how big the kitchen is. I think this needs totally ripping out, doesn't it? It needs everything. <laughs> I don't even know how big the garden is. <laughs> Two months ago, I gave John and Steph the keys to their house here in Southport. It was filled with an awful lot of stuff, but also had an awful lot of potential. So I'm back to see how they're getting on. This is coming on leaps and bounds. I'm chuffed to bits. They're keeping some of the original features, like the fireplace. They've managed to bag new windows for half price, saving them two and a half grand, but they need help fitting them. So I brought Phil along, who used to do it for a living. So these windows were a really tight fit. So before we fix them, what are we going to do, Phil? We'll check if they open. Yeah, because if you have to force them in and then you twist the frame, you'll jam your windows closed and then you're in big trouble. Shall we see? Shall we? Yeah. Come on, bud. Yeah. All good? All good. When you stage a property, people can visualise it more as a home than just a big grey or white box. It generally pushes sales a lot, makes people want to buy it more. So, fingers crossed, we'll get it all set up like a nice little show home, and then people will really just buy into the house. Four months ago, I gave Steph and John the keys to this tired semi in Southport, which was packed full of clutter and quirky features. And what a transformation. The old front room is now a stylish lounge straight out of the pages of a design magazine. It's a contemporary home which hasn't compromised on character. Many of the original features have been spruced up and brought back to life. The rundown old kitchen is now a beautiful modern space framed by the new patio doors. While the family bathroom has been brought bang up to date. But for me, it's the main bedroom that really sells this house. A hotel-style suite, complete with walk-in wardrobe and ensuite bathroom. It's testament to Steph's vision and design skills. Steph has used their beloved black paint wisely throughout. Every room now feels so much bigger and brighter. While outside, the old lean-to is gone and the overgrown garden transformed into an oasis of calm with freshly laid turf and lovely patio area. We got an offer from a first-time buyer which we couldn't refuse. And that offer was not for £195,000, it was for £210,000. <laughs> Guys, you made a profit of £36,240. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>